I can't stress how important it is to take an active interest in your clients. Coaching is about how you're navigating somebody through, through life's obstacles. The industry at the moment is a bit of a joke. Get a fucking grip. How I got a fat loss client to pay me £20,000. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Biceps and Banter, as you probably find from the YouTube channel. And we're here today to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And Mike is going to explain today how he managed to get his fat loss client to pay him £20,000 yep. for fat loss, just for fat loss. Like, would you believe? So yeah, that's the hook. That's what we're going with. And uh, we're going to talk about how he did it. So basically what he did is one upfront payment, Yep. £20,000, and then he sacked him off after that. So, video done. That's it. Isn't it that's, right, what, that's all you need to do, yeah. I love how he's cleaning his glasses like he needs to see on, on this. You know. Yeah, I don't know how they were disgusting. He's not going to look at me, is he? They still are, though. He doesn't care about looking at me, does like, he? Glasses wearers will know that this is the bane of your life. Like, they're still bad. Can't wear contacts. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't get them in. No. Tried once. Did I tell you? She tried once? We, no. <laughs> no, I did actually try once, but it took me 45 minutes to get one in. No point. We're pointless at that. Like, literally. It is pointless, then. not it? So, it's an hour and a half. You know, for for two, you ain't got an hour and a half to spare. I don't have an hour and a half, so I take him out. But how long does it take? Yeah, <laughs> right. So yeah, I just didn't have the time to learn. You sound like a coach, mate. Can't bother to learn. Glass that as takes it is. too long. Too long. Glass <laughs> as it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this video is off the back of a call that we did in the in the members group, which which went down well and kind of they all go down well. I, well, they always well, a members group. So they all go down well. The members group is our ninety nine pound a month. Um, a group where basically you get access to all the trainings that we do with all our one to one clients, and if you implement them, you can actually make. I say shitloads of money like it's that's the only thing we're bothered about but you can build a successful business based off the long-term things that we teach uh there's no hacks in there there's no short term fucking you're going to explode your business in a week but applied over time you will see results as you can see on our instagram page there's people now starting to to share their results dan i'm a i'm a new coach will it help me yeah 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 of course it will dan i've got 23 clients will it help me yeah of course it will dan i've got 31 clients will it help me yeah of course it will you yep. get the gist. Yeah, it's going to help you. Yeah. Whatever whatever stage you're at. But yeah, it's off the back of a call we did there about retention, um, basically, is that the industry at the moment is a bit of a joke uh, and coaches are becoming the punchline, to be honest, because um, the mentors are selling you a dream of like all this money up front, cash collected, all this stuff, and no one's actually helping coaches or teaching them how to actually retain those people once they're in the business. There's no focus on once the client is in and paid you the money to deliver the service that they've actually paid for. There's no, there's just no focus on it. And we're big on over-delivering. We're big on making sure that everyone has everything that they need. Um, like I said, with the members group, £99 a month. We've got other people who've tried to copy it, failed, obviously, because because they're shit, um, who've tried to charge more than that. And, and again, it's all about money with them. It's all about that. And for us, it's never been about that as much as it's been about actually helping people. That's what your job is as a coach believe it or not, is to actually want to help people, not just extract money from their bank account. Yeah, so obviously the hook was how I managed to get um, a client to pay 20, 20 grand. So that's um, eight years. Um, and that's that's not that's not one client. I've got three clients that have been with me now eight years. And then I've got a couple of clients that have been with me six or seven years and so on and so forth, right? And I still coach some, some fat loss. So it's paid me 20 grand over, over eight years. So I might add that, right? Obviously, it's not as sexy, is it, if it's not up front? But do you know what's pretty good? Is it's retaining clients for that long. It takes the stress off, off off any kind of lead generation. So the, the call that we did in the members group was prompted by a question that I had at a check-in. Because um, shock horror, we actually do the check-ins with our clients as well. And he said, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? said, yeah, shoot, you know, what you got? <laughs> he said... How do you retain clients for eight years? It's a good, good question. Um, I'll tell you, uh, and I'll tell you now. And I, I basically went down the route of of making ourselves, a, a, you know, equivalent to a utility bill. That we would be the last thing to go. And how do we go about doing that? And I guess we'll talk about some of those ways in in this in this call. But to, to kind of hammer the point at home is that three years ago when we pivoted to coaching coaches, I had roughly a hundred clients, give, give or take, roughly a hundred clients. Somewhere between 100 and 110, right? I've got 13 left of, the, of that same core group that was there, right? Which means that I've churned around 87 in three years, which equates to 2.4 on average per month. So that's what's left after three years without me posting anything to do with fat loss, without me keeping up to date with it, 
um, without me, you know, using my Instagram to, to help engage current fat loss clients and, and to prompt thoughts and to, to, to kind of plant the seeds as you should be doing about different uh, times a year and why it's important to stay consistent and so on, because you should be using your social media to, to, to plant seeds to your current clients. Mm-hmm. So that's without me doing that, I've still got 13 left. Dropped 87, 2.4 a month. And that's from a hundred over a hundred clients. You're always gonna see more churn with higher numbers as well, right? With that compared to a coach who has say 20, 30. Yeah. Like as a percentage, yeah. you're just you're uh, you know, if you're looking at ten percent churn, you're looking at ten people, whereas thirty to twenty, yep. you do the maths. You do the maths. You know. Um two to three. Three years later, I'm still sat here with clients. And have a look at your your churn rate for this year, if you're even tracking that data, which you should be. See if it's more than two point four. I bet it is. I, I bet it's more than two point four. Mm-hmm. And if you had a hundred clients, it was it's certainly gonna be more than two point four. So there's huge importance on retaining clients. Retaining a client is easier than gaining a client. You'll get a better result if they're retained. You've got more likelihood of a referral. And it's nice to coach people for years on end. It's it's nice. Now, it begs the question. Why would anybody want to be coached for eight years, Dan? Like, have they not reached their end goal yet? So this is another thing that coaches do is that they're so one-dimensional in, in the way that they coach, right? In that they are just going, oh, so did they not lose weight then? Well, no, they lost 10 kilos in the first, like, you know, six months, let's say, and they completely transform the way they do things. Is that the way that Mike would coach them and the way that I would coach them um, is that your future pacing, Similar. you're talking about the future, you're talking about what they've changed, how much they can change in the future still, and what other things can can be added in along the way. That client, when they came in, was focused maybe on fat loss. Then they wanted to focus on muscle gain. Then they maybe wanted to do another cut for a holiday. Then they maybe wanted to do a photo shoot. Then maybe they wanted to do a different style of training. Maybe they wanted to focus more on strength. Maybe do a competition or an event. Maybe do a high rocks. Maybe run a marathon. Maybe run a marathon abroad. Maybe do all these sorts of things alongside staying as strong as possible. The, the, the problem that coaches have is they're so one-dimensional in their ability. And they only focus on the macros or the calories or the weight loss that, well, their clients just outgrow them. They actually outgrow, well, once I've lost the weight, that's all you ever talk about, that's all you can do, so I'm going to outgrow you. Whereas the way that we've always coached people is that it's multifaceted. There's other things that they can do alongside it and they can grow into other events, they can grow into doing photo shoots, they can want to improve. But the point is that the person will also grow as a, as a human in those eight years. That person will have more knowledge. They understand more about it. They want to push themselves even further in other areas of their life. And actually what Mike will have done with them through coaching, as I would have done with my clients, is that they see the, the cross benefits in other areas of their life alongside being more disciplined with their food, their nutrition, um, their training, what it gives them, what it provides for them. They're not throughout that always training five days a week. They're not always on a calorie deficit. They're not always doing all those things. But the way coaches talk is like, that's all they can do. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if, you, if that's all you talk about on your social media and in your check-ins, of course they're going to leave because no one wants to be on a diet forever, do they? Th- the problem is, is that coaches aren't actually coaching anymore. They're not dealing with the human being in front of them. They're just taking people through their system of fat loss, their macros, their calories. And all they talk to them about is fitness, fitness, fitness. And do you know what? Fitness is actually pretty boring. Mike has not retained that client for eight years because all they've talked about is fitness. In fact, I'd argue the fact that he's retained them for eight years is because they've talked very little about fitness in the grand scheme of things. I don't mean not talked about it. I mean, if you were to look at all their check-ins or all their correspondence, I would argue less than 50% of the actual time in check-ins and talking the things that were spoken about will be about fitness. I would hypothesize. Yeah. So that's the, th- the thing is when people say, why, like, why would somebody need to stay for eight years? If, if you can't answer that as the coach, yeah. you've got problems. That's worrying. So I'll tell you the reasons why somebody would stay for eight years. It's because they enjoy it. That's one thing. It's not that they haven't reached a goal because... The, the the guys that have been with me say, again, let's think of like John Aguini, people like that. Um, he's done, you know, Ryan Stewart, three, four shoots, um, been on stage two or three times. It's not like they never got in shape. So why is it? So they enjoy it. That's one thing is that it's often, you know, said that it's the highlight of their week is that checking in is the highlight of the week. Mm-hmm which again is stark contrast to a lot of coaches that I work with where they can't get their clients to check in full of the money and people are dropping like flies. That's another warning sign, by the way, if your clients aren't, well, don't want to check in. Yeah, it's the highlight of the week. It's a place for them to check in with me, but also themselves. It's a place where they can dump their thoughts, vent, yep. get things off their cha- chest, expand about what's going on in their, their personal life. And again, 
sometimes I get this back. Oh, my client, I feel like I'm a therapist. Good. Good. You, you, because that's part of it. If you're expecting to coach somebody for eight years by dropping their carbs and increasing their calories uh, of, of cardio, you, you're, you're severely mistaken. Coaching is about how you're navigating somebody through, through life's obstacles. And this is where coaches fall down, is that they go, yeah, I just had four clients to leave, but you know, one of them is you know, doing this, and one of them's got quite a lot on at work, and one of them's doing that. And you go, S right, so? Like, like our clients never had that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, 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 our, like our clients never did. Like, and we said this yesterday on the call, it's like, well, we must have got the, 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 the couple of hundred clients that, in the world that just had a clear run. So, yeah. So, never had a breakup. You know, the, yeah, the, never the, had anything like that. Yeah, the few guys that I've got that have been with me eight years or seven years or six years, yeah, they, 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 their cars never broke down. They've never had a breakup. You know, they've never had personal stress. They've never been busy at work. They've never gone on holiday. Like, they, they, they've not got married. They've not had kids. No, no, no. I'm being facetious. They have all done that. But putting yourself in a position as a coach where they want to go through them things with you, that's indispensable. That's the thing that you need to be looking for. Yeah, and and it, like like we've always said, this stuff isn't the sexy bit, like because it's hard work. Building these relationships and thinking like this is is tough. It's not easy. Taking the time out to do proper full check ins, taking the time out weekends to reply to clients that are, that are struggling. It's not it's not easy. It eats into your time. It eats into your. I don't want to say sanity, but it eats into your ability maybe to kind of be as present as you want to be at home and all those sorts of things. And I kind of go, as a coach, I think that, that's normal. Like, I don't want to like say that, you know, you guys are we're at this sort of level, but I know that football managers, for example, like look at Pep and look at Jurgen Klopp. I know that when you see them in interviews, they, they, they non-stop thinking about football, even when they're at home. And you think at that level, that's kind of what's required, right? And again, not saying you're going to get to that level you're coaching, although why wouldn't you? Why not? Try. My point is, is that it doesn't just stop when they're at work. Like they think about these things at home. They watch more football at home when they probably could be with their wife and kids, all this sort of stuff. And coaches sit there all the time and say it to me, oh, I want a really good business. I want to do this. I want to do that. But I don't see many people wanting to do that work, like being a better coach and actually giving a shit about their clients and working till nine o'clock at night, doing check-ins, chasing up with their clients, making sure they're okay. I don't see them wanting to do that. I see them wanting to automate that. Wanted to take time off at the weekends to, to, to not have to do that. And I kind of have to sit there and go, well, the people that you look up to who've got those businesses aren't doing that. They're not t taking that time away. They're not sucking their clients off. They're actually going above and beyond to check in with them and to do those extra little things. And again, this isn't about fitness. Again, whenever I say check in or catch up, I remember when I had clients who, let's say, for example, were going for a breakup, I would be making sure I message them every so often. Hey, mate, you're good. How are things going? Or if they're on Instagram, replying to about football, just taking a mind off it a little bit, being there, being a mate. And I nearly posted this yesterday on my on my Instagram. Is like, if a client leaves you, do you want them to think it feels like they've lost a friend or feel like they've been ripped off? I would rather the former. I'd rather feeling like they left and they go, oh, I've lost a mate there. Like I couldn't afford it anymore for whatever reason, but I feel like I've lost a good mate rather than leaving because they feel like they were ripped off and didn't actually get much from the service. And the point is coaches aren't going above and beyond to be that person. They'd much rather keep them at arm's distance and palm them off and then wonder why they don't stay very long. That's why they do not feel any connection to you. And one of the big things that we used to do with our clients was make sure they felt that connection was, was deeper than just fitness. Like I said, fitness is boring. You connect with these people on a much deeper level. The biggest reason why people leave is because they're not seeing value in your coaching anymore. That's or the, valuing you. Or, that's you the know, biggest reason. That's that's the thing, like I just said, about being being a being a mate or being someone that they can confide in. I think it's just huge. Like, I remember when I was a PT, it happened all the time. Coaches just don't accept it, though. No. They see it as, oh, no, they said the finances. They're not going to turn around and go, hey, Steve, um, I'm leaving because I don't see value in this anymore. That's going to be rare that that happens, or they're not going to go, "Hey, Steve, um, Steve's the coach. Um, I'm not really getting a good service, or I don't really like the coaching." They're not going to say that. They're going to go, "Yeah, you know, a couple of bits have happened. Carl kind of needs a service and stuff like that, so the money's a little bit tight. So I'm going to shelf it. I'll definitely come back though." That's more likely because that's the the easiest get out that they can have. So, like when people are leaving. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be some people that do have some financial stress. I'm not going to say that 100% of people, yeah. you know, there's going to be people that have financial stress. There's going to be some flaky people that, again, that when times get rough, they do, you know, run away. Um, there are those things, right? Yeah. But not as often as what you think. Not as often because we've just proved it, right? So let's just say I, I've lost 2.4 and Dan Dan checked his numbers as well before. Okay. It's, just, it's pretty much the same between mm -hmm. two and three. 
right? So we've just proved it then, haven't we? Because it's not as often as what you think. So if I'm losing and Dan's losing uh, on average two and a half <coughs> per month on average, well, it can't be the five that, that you're having, right? Out of your client base of 20. Like, it, it can't be. It can't be that many. Because is it then just a coincidence that we that we find the only people that don't struggle with that? It's not, is it? It's not that. It's the fact that they're not seeing value anymore in your coaching because you haven't put yourself in a position to be valuable to them. Mm. That's the thing. So take it with a, a pinch of salt if they're saying that they've got this or they've got that or got uh, got the other. It is an excuse yeah. more often than, than, you, th th than you care to believe. And in terms of retention, like some things that you can do to help this, right? And in terms of your coaching ability. So if you followed us for any length of time now, you know that we're big on your Instagram and social media being very sort of personable, more personality based, more sharing what you're up to in real life and what you're doing behind the scenes as much as you are talking about fitness stuff, right? And it's exactly the same with your coaching is that when we used to do say like an eight to 10 minute video back to a client loom video, I would say a good five minutes that we talking about their life, what they said in their video, going what's going on with the missus, what's going on with the fellow, what's going on with the dog, the kids, what they were up to on holiday, where they were going, what they were doing. As much of your update needs to be about that and having a laugh and having a joke. Like, I remember Mike used to like do stupid shit and like put birthday hats on when it was their birthday and like poppers and all this sort of shit. Put daft costumes on and take the piss out of people like regularly. So things like that. Like even like again, if I was still doing it now, and I still do it with my clients even now on, on calls that I have with my with my with my coaching clients. If they're a football fan, I always talk about football. I'll start the conversation. With, oh my god, see the football! Or if they're a United fan, I'll just take the piss out of them because that's what I'm doing at the moment. Apparently, um, is that you start with those things that are just something that you would say to a mate. It doesn't go. You don't just start reeling off a list of things they need to work on straight away. Is is taking an interest in the human being and the person behind the the the, the client almost like again that the coaches just aren't taught that. And then also on social media, again, the same thing is that they're the people that are going to interact with you the most on your content. You'll find that most of your clients will interact with your content once they become a client more than maybe where they did. They'll maybe interact with it more than they did before that you're a client. It's just making sure you have those conversations and carrying those conversations on around normal, everyday life things and taking an interest in people. I can't stress how important it is to take an active interest in your clients. That, that's all. All it, I say all it is. Look, it being, being a good coach, knowing the how to help them, knowing all those things, right? But we talk about accountability all the time and buy-in from clients. You know, one of the best ways to get buy-in from a client is to show them that you give a shit about them. Show that you give a shit. And that's how you do that, is you take an interest in them as a human. Not hard, is it? The next thing that... Time to contract. Yeah. Got to be. That, that's, <laughs> not, that's, that's another thing, isn't it? It's like, struggling with retention. I'm struggling with retention. So should I implement a contract? No, because that's not solving the problem. Yeah. You, t you you adding a contract doesn't solve... Like, I would hate that. I would hate somebody to be only working with me because of a contract in place. Yeah. That's why we don't have them. It's like, no, we, we're confident in the value that we deliver. We, we're confident in that. So we don't need one. So you, you shouldn't need one. And it, again, it's just the whole... It's just the whole industry. It's just... It's mm. become less about coaching and just more about sales. And it's just it's shit, if I'm being completely honest. It, yeah. It's garbage. But anyway, what I was going to say is delivery of coaching. So this is another thing that, that winds me up. I'm a really good coach or clients love my app. It, it, it really winds me up because I'm like, well, show me the evidence of your clients not leaving you for years on end then. Because if your clients do believe you're a really good coach and they love your app to the extent that you believe you know that to be true, they'll be saying for years then, will they? No, they're not. Right, okay. So maybe it is the app or maybe you're not a very good coach or maybe you didn't onboard them very well or maybe your delivery is rubbish or maybe the type form that you're asking them to, to fill out is crap. It's arbitrary fitness-related questions that don't expand at all, have no depth to it, and actually don't lend itself to, 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 to very good coaching. That actually you're using your app and all you're doing is changing the macros on a week-to-week -week basis. They will leave. So you're not a very good coach. That isn't coaching. That's just changing numbers in an app. That's just giving them some, some rough fitness advice. It's nah, poor. Can't be that. It's pitiful. Can't be that. <laughs> so the delivery, and we will say it again, is... Receive a video from your clients. Oh, my clients won't want to do that. Yes, they will. Because again, we'll reiterate, well, how did we find the only clients then that did want to do that? Yeah. So they will. That lends itself to them expanding, talking with autonomy, going off on tangents, talking about their personal life. So you can then better coach them 
something mm-hmm. that wouldn't be applicable if they just filled in an arbitrary questionnaire or type form check-in. Yeah. So you can then coach them and make more informed decisions. Not only that, but you can build up a, a, a greater bond with them. So you receive a video, you send back a video. Again, not a green system or a red system or sometimes they get this or sometimes they get that. Send back a video and be available for a call. Again, don't even force a call every week. Don't even force a call. Because again, coaching should be flexible and person dependent. So be available for a call as and when that they need it, but film a video back via Loom. And I would do all of my coaching on Google Sheets, but it doesn't look as good as an app. I don't give a shit. People are not signing up because your app looks good. They're signing up because they want a result. The best way to get them a result, in my opinion, and probably in our opinion, is to run with Google Sheets because that's what we did shock horror and that's what's retained our clients for years on end shock horror that's what delivered all of our results shock horror because we can see nine months ago dan dan used this yesterday nine months ago okay they were at the same weight here they were 87 kilos and now they're 87 kilos but actually we've lost three centimeters off your waist um and your arms have gotten bigger um, and look at the photos side by side on this video look how good they look and you've got all of that data to go back over to inform you as a coach to show them um as the client to map out in future and go right okay we've got a weekend here i'm going to highlight that in red um so we know that we're probably going to di- dial in a little bit more then we're going to go to maintenance that weekend we're probably going to have saturday on track and you can you can map out better but instead because an app looks nicer like apparently does it ah, does it though yeah i always say that it doesn't i've used them as shit like and again i would go it's probably more likely that it's lazy coaching. It is probably more that, likely. That, that is what it is. I, I don't care what anyone thinks about that. We know. We've been doing this long enough now to say that, to, just to say it like, like that, is that it's lazy and it's shit and Google Sheets can actually look better and it can look good and all my clients have got amazing results. I've used Google Sheets. So I, I, I hate that. And you know, I was just going to add on to that. It's like, oh, but Mike, that sounds like it might take about 20, 30 minutes a client to do a check-in. Yeah. So. Yeah, it will. Yeah, 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 it will. Sorry, so they're paying you two hundred pound a month, and you can't do two hours work a month for them. Hundred pound an hour. You saw you're better than that. You think you're better than that. And again, it's always from from coaches who, who want more clients for the door. Like I saw a, client, a coach the other day on their Instagram story that I follow, and on their day, their breakdown of their Monday, they broke down from like nine till six the hours that they were working, and there was only two hours dedicated to check ins. And I would I would bet that that coach probably tried to do all their check-ins in that two hours because they do it through type form, because they do it through written stuff. 20 clients in two hours. It's group coaching, by the way, that. That's what we would consider. Yeah. At a push, we would consider that group coaching. Even then, I don't think it's actually enough feedback. And and, and I hate that pushback from clients. Well, oh, it's going to take quite a while per check-in. Yeah, but you're the one coming to me saying you can't retain a client longer than three months. So, and who can't get a client and can't get a result. Mm. How about you listen then? How about, how about you go, yeah, we'll take that. Because again, coming back to it and go, okay, if you've got 50 clients to do in a week, right? And it takes 30 minutes per client. That's 25 hours a week. What else are you doing in the week that you can't do that? Hmm. That's a part-time job. Hmm. For 50 clients paying you 200 pounds, that's 10,000 pounds a month for 25 hours a week. I'm I'm sorry, but like that, I don't understand that why that's not considered good or quick or efficient. Ah, oh, I can make it more efficient. No, you can't. We've just proven you can't make it more efficient because people aren't retaining clients very long. They're not getting a result with them. Yet they're moaning their business isn't growing. What do we know, though, mate? What do we know? Do you know what I mean? What do we know? Wow, it's 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 incredibly frustrating for us. Because if you're, I'm not being funny, but if you're getting, like we said at the start of this, if you're getting like ten people sign up a month. You should be growing your business at a rapid rate. At a rapid, rapid rate. But yeah, we're getting people go, oh, I've only got 12 calls, but this month's not really good enough. No, you're not good enough. Yeah. Let's be clear here. That is very, very good. 12 calls, 10 signups a month is outstanding to build a business. If you do that and you're not growing like you want, the problem is you. Mm-hmm. That, let's call it what it is. Problem is you, it's your coaching, it's your retention, it's the ability to get results. There's nothing wrong with Instagram, your following, your engagement, nothing wrong with any of that, if that's happening. And I'll die on that hill. And, I, and, and, and I'm being very generous with the 10 to 12, by the way. It probably should be near a 6, 7. Well, we've just established that our our retention is two and, a, two and a half. So we could sign up three and still be growing then. 
like if we were still in fitness three and we'd still be growing not maintaining not going backwards three and still growing if, if that goes to eight that's 60 new clients a year based on those numbers there you go that that sums it all up right so rather than focusing so much on getting more on the front end if you're hitting those rough numbers the problem is your coaching it's your ability to get results so don't even think about anything else until that point point. and yes it will take three to six months to be a better coach to implement these systems to be better at it but you'll have a business that'll last three to six years whereas what we're seeing currently is people who can't do that leave an industry i'm just get results. i'm just i'm i'm just sick of it like i'm honestly because every coach wants to join a business mentor because they're entitled. They're entitled to get 10 grand. It's the first thing that I hear out of people's mouth. What gives you the right? Like we did a we did a webinar the other, the other week and we were talking about the top 1% of earners and the top 2% of earners. Top 1% of earners. It's like ridiculous. Like to, to earn 10 grand, you're talking like surgeons that like specialized surgeons. Studied for 15, 20 years. Yeah, they've studied for years and years and years and worked their way up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, fucking Johnny PT wants to be earning 10K, but they don't want to... Because he's got an app. They don't want to do the work for it. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Because every, because every mentor is telling you how you can charge up front and how you're worth this amount of money. No, you're not. You're not. You're not fucking worth that. You're not. You're not, you're not, worth, yeah, you're not worth that at all. Show, show me the evidence that you're worth that because nobody's staying. You're not getting no results. So, so you're not worth it, are you? All you're doing is trying to extract cash out of people and give an inferior service because you don't want to do the work because you can't be bothered to coach because you can't be bothered with clients moaning. That's what you're there for. You're there to coach them. If, it's, if, if they were going to stick to everything, they wouldn't need you, would they? Literally. Like, and I'm sick of it. My clients don't really uh, stick to anything. Yeah, because you can't coach them very well. The art of coaching is, is getting somebody consistent and somebody adherent you know inclusive of all of those life things that's going on and that doesn't mean tracking everything or sticking to a meal plan that means being malleable and flexible in your approach and using the correct tool in the in the, from the toolbox to, to 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 bring out at any given week but again people are falling for this or coaches are, are so easy easily led to go and join a mentorship that promises them numbers but actually there's no focus on any kind of coaching it's just how much money can we take out of hard working people that actually need help with something to do with their their confidence their weight their health it's manipulative like there's manipulative sales processes going on fake scholarships fucking shit tactics and this is what the coaching industry is it's embarrassing it, it, it's honestly it, it's embarrassing and maybe because you're watching this you're 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 half interested in this stuff and, and hopefully more than half interested otherwise you won't be here hopefully you guys watching this are the ones that want to be the good coaches that want to retain the clients that want to get good results that build a business in the right way hopefully that's the the case and hopefully you can take from this that actually you probably do need to work on your attention even if you've got the best interest even if you do care about your clients you will still need to work on your attention as the main protocol it's not as sexy as lead gen it's not as sexy as new signups it's not as, sec uh, as sexy as cash collected but like dan said you will have a business here in three to six years the amount of people that we see that ruin their business by going too far the other way i'm telling you now so let's start to change the way that we are with our clients let's start to be better coaches let's actually do the job that somebody's employing us to do let's do it properly instead of looking for a hack a workaround a quicker way of doing check-ins automating offloading bringing on another coach to do it because i don't want to do it get a fucking grip that's the end of the video passionate <laughs>